This okay. is what it is, and, and you too, you gotta do your job and make sure you expose niggas for what they are, bro. Expose these dudes for what it is, bro. You know what I'm saying? You over here just picking at me. I'm not picking at you. Yeah, you're picking at me. No, I, I stay quiet, bro. <laughs> I stay quiet, bro. Like, do your research for real. Dudes drop the bag, bro. I know about it. All right, glad. Right. So stick right. to it. Do right. your research. Right. You know, I got shit on receipts, bro. Like... What about the young guys that are coming up? We got like Virgil Ortiz in there. We got uh, Blair Combs. Who, you know any other Virgil young guys? Ortiz, I love to fight Virgil Ortiz. Blair. A lot of people have been comparing um, Virgil Ortiz to Ver Fernando Vargas. They've been saying like if Virgil goes up and fights Crawford, it could be like the same situation. I think Virgil Ortiz is honestly a little bit more, has a little bit more uh, power and tools than Fernando Virgil Ortiz is fucking good, though. He's very good. He's very, very good. What do you think about him and uh, Jerron Ennis or maybe Pistol Pete one day? Oh, you don't want Pistol Pete. <laughs> you don't want that. What do you think, Pistol Pete? One day. You and um, Virgil Ortiz one day. Yeah, I love, I love to play with Virgil Ortiz or any of the top. I mean, he's in a... Top 10 right now, right? Yeah, he's number one. He's actually uh, number one in the WBO. Yeah, he's man, give me any of those dudes in the, in the top 10, and I'll be happy. That's what I'm, I'm sure for in the next year. You feel me? Yeah. So it's like, I don't understand this boxing business. Like, look, I just, I was supposed to fight um, Virgil Ortiz before before the Stanios fight happened. Like, they was I was going to fight Virgil Ortiz in December. But then they was trying to pay me peanuts to fight. Virgil Ortiz, you feel me? Who, Golden Boy or your manager? That's what I'm saying. I like I told you, I never spoke. I never spoke to anybody from Golden Boy. My manager told me. Um, six figures, yeah, six figures, Shh. right at six figures. Come on, champ. But Stanios is about to beat a milli. Right. Uh, Stanionis is a champ. How you gonna what do you this? Mean? How you gonna do this to us, man? Stanionis got a belt. And he a, the A side. And, and hold on, he got a fucking promoter. His promoter is Richard Schaefer. It's like right, so, top rank. So look, Bob, Al, Golden Boy, Schaefer. I mean, now you got Eddie, but in so, the past, so, before about... Eddie was a figure, Schaefer and you know uh, Al, Golden Boy, Oscar. And Schaefer were like partners, like, but go ahead, I'm sorry. Talk yeah, but that. Virgil's different. Virgil is a big name. What you do to Virgil, people will see. They can't hide it like that PBC fight that you fought a dude. The year you was the B-side, but nobody don't know him. People know Virgil. Mm -hmm. He next up. The, people talk about Virgil and Ennis, Virgil and Crawford. You know, Virgil not taking Ennis the Spence. Crawford route. Virgil and Spence, they got amateur history. Virgil, uh, Spence made him cry. They talked about fighting on Twitter. Like, nah, champ. I mean, look at the, I mean, this is a live show. In the comments, they killing you. They like, bro, he's 32 and he he didn't take a Virgil Ortiz shot. Like, what's wrong with him? And it's kind of true. You got no big manager. You got no big promoter. And you got the biggest fight of your life offered to you. You ain't take it. It's, it's fucking but Look, crazy. bro, if after, after taxes... That's half yeah, of that shit gone. I know, After but it ain't manager, about the money. It's about the opportunity. If you beat Virgil, you the man. No, I get it, though, because shit. You but know. How, is, how am I the man? If I beat Virgil, they're going to say Virgil wasn't that good. Who Virgil never fought Errol Spence. Virgil never fought Boots. He never fought none of Bruh, them. But he if, fought even, even if you beat Boots, he fought even if you beat Boots right now, they'll say that. Oh, they wasn't that good. That's how boxing is, bro. You can't nah, worry about these nah. these these people talking. I never fought in their life. Talk about oh, somebody's good. Hey, when you, even Terrence Chant. Crawford said that you beat somebody, they go say you're not good after that. Champ, you really sit here saying that if you beat Virgil, they gonna say he was a hype job? Nah, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get clout for beating Virgil, but they not going they gonna be like, yo, I gotta fight Errol Spence. Take a hundred bands to fight Errol Spence now. He took a hundred bands to fight Virgil Ortiz. Nah. Take a hundred bands to fight. Bruh, if you fight Virgil, you number one in the WBO, number two in the WBO, number one in the WBA, or you the regular champ. Like, no, champ, no, that's not how it works. Like, 
Virgil is highly... Re- Virgil could have had a title shot versus Crawford like a year ago when he was still training with Robert or Garcia. We interviewed him. And he like, we don't want to fight him right now. Both of them said it. Like, no, Virgil's up there, bro. You beat Virgil. Nah, I know he's you up there. You on the map. You beat Virgil. There's no way Matchroom or Golden Boy don't sign you. Like, Golden Boy going to have options on you because you beat they guy. But if for whatever reason they fucking drop the ball, you think Eddie ain't coming to swoop you in? Nah, I don't, I don't see that. I just can't. But let me ask you. And I state that without arrogance. I don't mean to be arrogant, but I am a realist. And as a realist, it would be absolutely unprofessional for me to sit here and pretend I'm not an exceptional human being. Because I am. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire probably presents something the boxing game's been missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT. And I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, I'm just going to keep it all the way a buck. I'm going to keep it all the way a spade. I, I really have been dreading making this video. I don't want to make this video because I like this guy a lot. But this is the part of the job here where you gotta put my, I, I got to put my feelings aside and I got to call a spade a spade. You know, uh, recently it was revealed on the Boxing Voice to the public because this is new information to me. And I'll get to that in a second. But it was revealed to the Boxing Voice and to the public that... Pistol Pete Dobson, you know, welterweight contender, um, you know, that he was recently offered the fight uh, with Virgil Ortiz, and it was upwards of $100,000, $120,000, and he basically wound up turning it down. Now, this made him look very bad because, as you guys saw in the beginning of this video, he's called out Virgil Ortiz before. He said he wanted that fight. He's cried. He's, he's been very, very upset about not getting the fights he wants in boxing he's crying and complaining about not getting the fights he wants in boxing and he's been through a lot in his boxing career so with that being said pete dobson in the eyes of the public makes him it's made him look bad it's made him look like a duck um and i'm not going to argue with anybody who says he's ducking virgil ortiz because even if i tell them all the facts i'm not going to change their mind nor am i trying to but either way you cut up slice of the dice that pete dobson has made himself look bad now a lot of this happened in his career, and I and I talked to him, and I, and I got down to the bottom of it with him himself. I got on the phone with him, literally, like I called Pete, I talked to him, and uh, basically, you know, there was a lot that uh, he disclosed to me. So I'm gonna share that with you guys, and I'm gonna get my take, and we'll, we'll figure out what solution he, we can we can get for Pete Dobson because this this what's happening with his career is just so chaotic. But basically. So Pete Dobson turned down the offer for Virgil Ortiz. He, he, he wanted more money. The fight was offered for Pete to happen in uh, December of last year. Uh, the zone, uh, matchroom boxing, or not matchroom boxing, Golden Boy Promotions, the zone, and all parties involved. Virgil Ortiz was, was, was slated to fight in December. It was gonna be on an LA date um, in Los Angeles. He was gonna be the B-side fighter. They offered him $120,000. Now that's, the, uh, Ryan, um, Pete's manager, who now I've recently discovered he's no longer with, he doesn't even have this manager anymore, but Pete's now former manager, Ryan Ricky, came to Pete with an offer, um, and this is all, th- th- these are all facts per Pete Dobson himself, so keep that in mind. Um, he came to him with a, he, he, told, he basically told Pete that he had a, a $120,000 offer, where, um, and, he, and he made, and, and pretty much said that the fight was already made. And he didn't really talk to Pete about it much, right? So there was a bit of a mis- miscommunication there, according to Pete, right? So Pete was told by some other prominent people in boxing, who I won't say in this video, but there were other people in boxing that told Pete basically that, you know, the fight is worth more than what they're offering you. So Pete took that advice and he basically said, no, I want $175,000. So... Um, Basically, uh, he was told he couldn't get paid one hundred seventy-five thousand dollars because basically they weren't going to um, have that in the budget, right? So Pete was gonna—he said, "Well, I'm willing to wait to see. Uh, I'll wait, and we can do it later on for more money, right?" And ultimately, right? Like I—I I, I can get into all the semantics of like you know money this, money that, you know, and all the chaos in Pete's career, but. I really do think Pete's done himself a disservice, truth be told, just being unbiased and not being biased for him because I can't be biased for him. I can't be biased for anybody. And I like Pete Dobson a lot. He knows how much I rate his skills and everything. But, like, I think he's done himself a disservice because the reality is his position, his position in boxing is that of a guy who is a 32-year-old uh, veteran fighter who doesn't have any big 
uh, marketable names on his resume that would really push him into the pay grade that he wants. So a guy, a, a Virgil Ortiz fight and a fight that mattered to won't come on your door every day. And now with him turning it down, I think it's I think it's gone all wrong for him because now it's like uh, now Terrence Crawford, one of his ex sparring partners, has entered the fold of Golden Boy, and it looks like Golden Boy is gonna have Virgil line up to fight Crawford if Crawford beats Alexis Rocha, right? Because Oscar De La Hoya has been very adamant about giving Crawford a schedule of fights. So Alexis Rocha, Virgil Ortiz, these are the guys Golden Boy wants to line up for Crawford, and if he, and he, and if he does what he's supposed to do, then. The plan is eventually at the end of all that, Earl Spence Jr., right? So Pete's not going to have the Virgil option any, at any time soon because Virgil is going to fight Stanley Honest. He has to beat Stanley Honest to even be in position to fight Crawford. And then if that happens and Crawford beats Rocha, then, that, then Crawford, Crawford, Crawford Rocha is happening towards the latter parts of this year. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. So Pete decided to turn that, turn that offer down when he could have fought Virgil, could have showcased his skills, could have actually showing himself to be of higher quality to a larger audience. And even if he would have been competitive and lost, okay, maybe $120,000 out of taxes isn't a lot of money, but you would have got a career high payday. It would have been better money and your stock would have been up. You would have been more known. Your market value would have increased just so long as you perform well. And that's really a question he has to ask himself. You know, I, I could sit here and say he's going to perform more or not perform more, but ultimately, if he, if he believed in his skills like he said he did, why why didn't he try to take the fight and at least go in there and perform? Because if he went in there, gave Virgil a tough fight, and let's say maybe he lost a controversial decision or fought a value and finally got knocked out but won the hearts of the people, um, you know, and was TV friendly, or, or you know, pe then people would want to see him again. And and, and, Vir and I, I, I would be of the belief that Golden Boy can line him up, line him up with, with one of the other world twins. He'd be in that. He'd be in the fold now. He'd be on. The, he'd be in the mix now. He'd be, he'd be. He'd be linked to the Rochas and the Raul Cordiels, and or maybe they can make him McKinson because McKinson's fought on Golden Boy. I mean, there would have been more options, but now he's turned down this offer. Right? He's turned. He's turned down this offer. All the guys from Golden Boy he could have fought, like Rocha or Virgil, are all probably going to be lined up to fight Crawford. He doesn't have a stable situation with his career, um, you know, and it's just been it's, it's just been a lot. A lot. And, then, and then recently I saw that he met Eddie Hearn out there in New York during the Serrano uh, fight week. Yeah, I know, Pete. How you doing? You're going to fight on our card, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you? I know, I know. He's injured. He broke his hand. He was fighting uh, Jarko. He was going to fight our guy in um, in London, oh, okay. and he broke his hand. He's just having an operation next week, so okay. he's still going to make that fight. But it's going to be a couple of months, I think, until he's, he's back ready. So. When you, you you haven't fought since, no? Yeah, well, give you a fight. That's a good fight, dude. And, and Eddie Hearns talking to him about making the uh, Jarko fight. Now that's a fight I'd like to see Pete Dobson and Kyle Mean Jarko because Kyle Mean Jarko. And Pete Dobson, that was a fight that when it fell out, it wasn't his fault. You know, I was I was with him today at the gym when he was supposed to do his last sparring session before going to England. And um, basically, this guy, Agiarco, pulled out with a hand injury. He's been resting his hand, getting surgery. Eddie Hearn says that once it's healed up and, you know, he has a date, that that's a fight they, they like to make. But then you can't really trust Eddie Hearn because at the end of the day, Eddie doesn't really care about Pete. Eddie is going to care about Agyarko. Agyarko is his priority, not Pete. So Pete has put himself in like no man's land, the most unfavorable position. You know, he's, and it's just, it, it, it's really unfortunate. You know, I think, you know, just, just being unbiased it, 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 and it's no hate. I, I say these things in love to Pete. It's never out of hate. I, I really do think um, with his career, like, I, I, I wish, you know, because he's not with his trainer anymore, right? He, he was, he was uh, his last four or five fights, he was working with coach Jeff Ports. And, you know, he has his opinions about, you know, their relationship and whatnot. They split because of this whole Virgil Ortiz thing and whatnot. And, 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 this, and likewise with, you know, his manager, Ryan Ricky. Um, but I really do think... It, I would have loved to see Pete and, and Jeff continue because um, whether Pete wants to admit it or not, if he could be honest with himself, Jeff Ports is the one that helped. I'm not going to say it was all Jeff because obviously it, it's a team. Jeff had to push the right buttons with Pete's personality to get the best out of him. And Pete had to be willing to listen to what whatever Jeff did. 
irrespective of what Pete thinks, if, if Pete thinks he knows more about boxing than Jeff, whatever the case may be, but 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 it worked. Whatever 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 happened, it worked because when when Pete Dobson came to Beta Bay Boxing in like early 2021. Um, he was an unsigned fighter who was getting out of a bad contract, who had no momentum in his career. And it was Coach Jeff Poritz, you know, that got on these, that, that helped get him these fights in South Florida, that helped get him in a place where he was winning fights, looking good, building a little buzz for himself, you know, get, beat, beat Jose Miguel Borrego. And, 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 and whether Pete wants to admit it or not, Coach Jeff got him into a position where he was actually offered a Virgil Ortiz fight. And him turning it down is on him. It's not on Coach Jeff, and it's not on anybody else but him. So um, it was heartbreaking for me to hear that because, you know, I really did enjoy the, the Coach Jeff Pete uh, trainer fighter situation. Um, Pete has had to overcome a lot of odds in his career to get to where he's at. Uh, coach Jeff is a, is a newer coach on the scene now, and, and, and I feel like Pete was, to me, was like his one of his first real, like, great jobs he did in boxing. So, um that's my opinion, man. You know, I'm, 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 I am disappointed in Pete uh, when it comes to the Virgil thing. You know, ultimately, look, I understand it's prize fighting. He's got to do what he's got to do. But I, I really do think he put his foot in his own ass. That, that, that's, that's just my opinion. I think he put his foot. I, I think he put his foot in his own ass. And I can't be biased. I gotta call it for what it is. You know, if I was getting on Harold Calder for fighting Argentinians, I gotta get on Pete for not fighting. Virgil Ortiz when he was going to make excess of six figures, you know, which for a guy of his position and stature in boxing right now, I think would have been great, a great opportunity for him to show what he could do to the world, but he passed up on it. And now it looks like at this moment in time, Golden Boy has other plans for Virgil Rocha and the whole stable of welterweights. So uh, listen, I'm rooting for him. I hope he can get the Kyle Mina Gyarko fight or some fight, but um, Pete Dobson, I just think personally needs to make smarter, smarter decisions um, in his career. And uh, that's just what it is. So, uh, yeah, man. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, that's my opinion on Pete Dobson uh, turning down the Virgil Ortiz fight. You know, I think he made himself look really bad. And I, and I, and I do think he's put himself in a, in a very chaotic place in his career. So I, I wish him the best. I want to keep covering him. I want to keep making videos about him. And um, hopefully he can, you know, get the biggest fights possible, and when he gets them, perform at the highest levels because he is a hell of a fighter. So, uh, yeah, let, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure you guys hit the title subscribe, and like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, take care, guys. Thank you for watching another video on The Untouchable True School Sports Empire. For more great boxing content just like this video, click right here and make sure you subscribe. Much love from sunny South Florida.